Catherine Gunet works for the French General Confederation of Labor Union, which is trying to stop the kind of labor market reforms Germany has already introduced. She wants to keep France's 35-hour week and strict employment protection laws. I don't know why the Germans accepted reforms like this. People in France are protesting against them. We don't want to lose the social gains we've made. We want to hold on to rights that have been in place since 1936. Changing the law would result in the employees losing the advantage they hold now. Opposition to the reforms is bitter, even though the French unemployment rate is twice as high as it is in Germany. The new laws would curtail the union's influence, so the left-leaning CGT is also in the midst of a power struggle. Refinery workers are striking, hitting the country where it hurts. The government has had to tap strategic reserves to keep vehicles out on the road. In the north, French motorists are crossing the German border. Filling stations in the city of Saarbrücken are only too happy to have the extra business. But many German business people are shaking their heads at the French Union reaction. August Wilhelm Scheer, for example, is holding back on investing in France, partly because of the inflexible labor market laws there. He says reforms are long overdue. When you see qualified people locked out of their professions, you know something is wrong with the structures. It's important to realize that there are no God-given structures. You have to keep adapting to the current situation, economic situations and technological developments, and not be stubborn like a three-year-old who wants everything to stay just the way it always has been. In Saarbrücken, where thousands of Germans and French cross the border daily, the strike is a hot topic even in the shoe stores. Salesman Guido Felding grew up in France. He sympathizes with French people who say they're fighting for their rights. I understand this rage, I can relate to it. It's not my approach, I'm not the rebellious type, but I can understand the motives. That's part of the cliché about the French that they're quicker to take to the barricades than Germans, who usually prefer to negotiate. What rights should workers have? How flexible should they be required to be? And how many hours should people have to work? These women have different opinions on the strike. It can't get any worse than it already is. We have to open our mouths and do something about it. I'd go for the 40-hour work week again. That would be better. Political economist Oliver Groll from the Saarbrücken Chamber of Commerce and Industry has been watching developments in France, partly for the sake of German companies. Businesses in the two countries are closely intertwined. It's a symbiosis, a competition, everything. And when the French are doing badly, we suffer. So our companies have a great interest in seeing the French do well. Then they order more and pay more. Union activist Catherine Gunet intends to keep demonstrating until the government reverses its reforms and puts things back as they were. We are to show our dissatisfaction. The government says we're in the minority, but it's the majority that's responding and taking to the streets. In the final days before the European soccer championship, there's still no agreement in sight.